The visit, by the way, to Pennsylvania uh, by Biden comes as the campaign this morning is launching a new six-figure, five-day ad blitz there. I'm a proud steel worker, just like my parents and my son. The American worker built this country to be the greatest country that we had to live in. We listened to four years of Donald Trump talking about infrastructure because there was a lot of lip service with the previous administration. Joe Biden delivered on it. I see jobs coming to the area. I see infrastructure being fixed up. I see those policies working. We can strengthen our workforce in this country. That's what Joe Biden has done. You tell me an investment that the previous administration made that is even close to what Joe Biden has done. Donald Trump has shown through his history that workers mean nothing to him. Right now, we have the most pro-American worker president in office that we've ever had in this country's history. Donald Trump cares about one person and one person only, and that's Donald Trump. We need somebody that's going to effectively lead and do what's necessary for this country, and that's Joe Biden. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Joining us now, Democratic Governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro. He is a member of the Biden-Harris Campaign's National Advisory Board, so I can ask you campaign questions. Uh, good to have you on board this morning. Um, how does the Biden campaign, especially in the important state of Pennsylvania, uh, confront the disinformation and the threat of Trump and the Trump campaign, their tactics? I think doing exactly what the president did yesterday and what he's doing today in Pennsylvania and what he's going to do tomorrow in Pennsylvania, and that is take the fight directly to Donald Trump and show the clear contrast. You spoke a moment ago before I came on the air about Donald Trump sitting in a courtroom and Joe Biden being yeah. back in his hometown of Scranton, the place that shaped his values, the place that really, I think, shapes his focus, his president fighting for the middle class, where Donald Trump is focused on one thing and one thing only himself, as he always has been. So I think just continuing to show that clear contrast, bringing the fight directly uh, to the former president and showing the good people of Pennsylvania and all across this country the clear contrast in this race, the way President Biden is yeah. focused on helping lift up the middle class, not screw over the middle class the way Donald Trump has, the way President Biden is focused on expanding real freedom and protecting a woman's right to choose, not ripping it away and creating chaos the way Donald Trump has. So I think just prosecuting so, the case against Donald Trump yeah. and showing that clear mm -hmm. contrast. So, Governor, uh, tell me, um, why, what does Joe Biden need to do all across the country, but especially in Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, to bring working voters back to the Democratic Party? Uh, there are a lot of working voters, as you know, uh, that have have backed Donald Trump. A lot of people who didn't benefit from his economic policies, who didn't benefit right. from the largest tax cut ever for billionaires and multinational corporations, uh, didn't didn't support union workers, and yet many of them still voting for Donald Trump. What is Joe? How does Joe Biden reach those voters and let them know that? A vote for Joe Biden is better for their economic future. Well, look, let's not forget, Joe Biden won the presidency last time, and he won Pennsylvania, and he won union households. Um, President Biden is going to be in a union hall in Pittsburgh today, in a steelworkers hall. He's very comfortable there. He's very comfortable around the folks who um, work as steelworkers, the folks who work in our building trades across Pennsylvania. Uh, he's been there for them. His policies have lifted, have lifted them up, whereas Donald Trump's policies have held them back. I think all Joe Biden needs to do is get out and tout his record, uh, make sure that people know about it. That's part of my responsibility as governor of Pennsylvania and others who are trying to support and lift up the president. He's got a strong record of achievement for our workers. The infrastructure resources he's put forth are going to keep our building trades here in Pennsylvania busy for more than a decade. Um, there are children in Pittsburgh, where he's going to be today, who are drinking water that doesn't have lead in it anymore because the president made sure that the water lines that connected to their homes were replaced and no longer is there lead in their drinking water. We've got 276,000 Pennsylvanians that are Pennsylvania homes and businesses that don't have access to high-speed Internet. That's changing under President Biden, and it's the building trades right. and other 
other workers who are going to lay that fiber and put up those towers to connect people to the internet so folks can start a small yeah. business or consult with their doctor, you name it. This is real tangible stuff. The president's got a great record to run on, and now he's got to go run on it and make the clear contrast with Donald Trump, right. who has routinely throughout his career in the private sector and as president screwed over workers here in Pennsylvania so and across this country. So, Governor, let me ask you something. In your position as governor, uh, have you have you respond to it? Um, we and other people had predicted before the 2020 election that if Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin uh, didn't count early votes until after uh, the election day, uh, if they didn't do it like Florida, which a slew of Republican governors all in a row have all supported Florida counting early votes early. So on election night, you know, within an hour or two, who won the state of Florida? Uh, I know that can't happen in Wisconsin. Last night, uh, Democrats in Michigan regained control of, of the state legislature, uh, so they can do it there. I know it's a little tougher in Pennsylvania, but is there any hope that Pennsylvania and Michigan can do what Florida and so many other states do? You count the early votes early, and that takes yeah. the, 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 the wind out of Donald Trump's sails when it comes to lying about rigged elections. We yeah. will know on election night who won Pennsylvania, who won Florida, yeah. who won Michigan. Can you do that in Pennsylvania? Yeah, you're highlighting a really important issue. It's known as pre-canvassing, the ability to, you know, pre-canvass, pre-sort, and, and literally slide the ballots through a machine so that you can get those tallies right after the polls close, which is 8 p.m. here in Pennsylvania. L let me just say, I think the, the clerks who are doing that work, Republican and Democrat alike, they're our neighbors all across Pennsylvania. They're doing a hell of a job, but they're doing it kind of with one arm tied behind their back. Let me explain why. Pre-canvas is something that is supported by Republican and Democratic county officials, the people that run our elections. It's supported by my Secretary of State, the great Al Schmidt, himself a Republican who oversees our elections. Um, it should easily and overwhelmingly pass in the legislature if it came up for a vote. But the reason it hasn't is Donald Trump told the Republican leaders in our state Senate, don't run that pre-canvas bill. Don't do any of that. And the reason is he wants the chaos. We've seen that. He is a guy who loves to inject chaos into everything, into our elections, into our tax code, uh, into you know the policies that harm working folks every single day. And unfortunately, we still have some Republican leaders here in Pennsylvania who take their cues not from the people or even their local Republican elected officials but they take their cues from Donald Trump and we see more chaos. So I think it's going to be hard to change that here in Pennsylvania this year. But the good news is we've got county officials, Republican and Democrat alike, who are going to do the right thing, who are going to process these ballots as quickly as possible. And hopefully we will know soon. The bottom line here is that in 2020, notwithstanding any of the BS Trump or his offspring or enablers said, we had a free and fair, safe and secure election. And Joe Biden won by over 80,000 votes. And by the way, some Republicans won on those ballots as well. The will of the people was respected. And we're going to do the same thing here in Pennsylvania again this year. It's a shame you can't get through the legislature. What I think almost everybody, except perhaps Donald Trump, agrees would make this process even more secure, or at least not give him that space in those days after the election to start fanning the flames of conspiracy theories. Um, but, Governor, I want to ask you right. uh, what you share with President Biden before he comes to Pennsylvania. And by that, I mean... You're out there, you live in the state, you're talking to voters, you're getting emails and letters on calls all the time about what really concerns voters in a state so crucial like yours. And if you want to, if you want to get more specific, even in the suburbs, swing voters around Pittsburgh and Philly, is it inflation, which ticked up again in the last report? Is it the border? Is it abortion? What do you hear the most from concerned voters in your states? Because those are the issues that will swing the presidential election as well. Look, I think all of those issues are on people's minds, and the president knows that. He doesn't need me to tell him that. 
Um, I think in particular in the wake of what happened uh, in Arizona, going back to literally a Lincoln era law on abortion, effectively banning abortion in that state. And we've seen chaos in other states as a result of Donald Trump um, trying to overturn, successfully overturning Roe v. Wade. I think that level of chaos and taking away people's freedom is certainly on folks' minds and certainly something people are worried about. And uh, I'm pleased that the president wants to codify row and, and provide more freedom to millions of women here in Pennsylvania and all across this country. I think that's really critical. I think the economic policies that the president was speaking about yesterday, how we're going to lift up the middle class, how we're going to make sure that we cut costs for them. Look, that's something we've done here in Pennsylvania. I was proud that we cut taxes for seniors the first time in you know, nearly two decades. We had the largest expansion of the child care tax credit ever here in Pennsylvania. We brought Republicans and Democrats together to get that done. We cut business taxes. We put money back in the pockets of the middle class. I think we're showing here in Pennsylvania how to do that. I think the president's policies certainly uh, support that and contribute to that. And uh, I think all of those things are on people's minds. The president's got a strong record to run on. And now we've got to go out and not only make the positive case on what he's accomplished and what he wants to do, but prosecute the case against Donald Trump, the way he's taken away our freedoms and injected more chaos in our lives. Lives. All, all right, Pennsylvania Governor uh, Josh Shapiro, thank you so much. Greatly appreciated. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.